Hey everyone, today we're going to be using input output manipulation to create some formatted output and try to change our dull looking command windows into something more attractive. So to get started, we open up our IDE and include one new header file called IO manipulation. So I include IO manipulation. And now after this, I'm going to introduce something. Now we have like a bundle of co functions now we could use. So a lot of bundle of functions are available for us. One of them are called the set fill function. So for this set fill function, we could include something, any kind of character to it. So inside the input uh, parentheses, you could put any kind of character. I'll put, you could put an asterisk or I'll put a tilde right now. So after that, I console output and then I do something which is called set width. Now set width basically does is that it requires one integer. So basically I put some kind of integer like 10 and then I put a number. So I put a number like, let's see, eight. Okay. So what this does, this code does is that first of all, uh, set width is making the width formatted so that, you know, your uh, output appears in a list formatted way without any, uh, you know, those randomness, are, uh, in output, it's gonna convert that into something more succinct and well mannered. And the other thing over here is that the input, which is 10, makes it 10 spaces. So it is by default right space. So the number will appear like the eight will appear at the right end, and the no the spaces will be like zero space. Uh, the output, what you could see, you're gonna see. In the command command window is going to be space so i'll represent space with an underscore so space two three four five six seven eight nine so nine spaces and then after that you're going to see this eight so in these spaces what i basically did is that i is replaced those spaces with this set fill function the call tilde so i put a character which is called tilde so basically there's going to be nine tildes over here that's what you're going to see so now we need one more thing over here is that we have to console out this because we want to see in our terminal screen. So save this into our code. So we say 36 is already made 37. Now we go and execute compile and run. And now you can see the same exact thing appearing. So it is basically by default, right? Uh, it it appears the number appears on the right. What ha what happens if you want to make it appear on the left? You basically do the following. You just include the left keyword and you save it, and then after that you execute and compile. So it's now on the left side, and then it's appearing. So now this was it. But now one other thing I wanted to tell out is that. You could also include strings like, for instance, I say like, clever coding and uh, I know it's 10 because so this is like uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is more than 10. So I'm not going to include that. I'm just going to put this and let's see what uh, what's going to come out. So we're going to put a space and we're going to paste this out and then we're going to paste this out and we're going to put one more. So we're going to paste one more and we'll say over here coding, please. So if I save this and I execute compile and run, you're going to see now this appearing. So what's basically happening? there is basically shifted to the left the default is right and there are 10 characters so basically one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so each of them have 10 characters but the thing is that over here in subscribe you could see that only one tilde is print and basically it's co counting all the 10 so basically that is formatted output what we basically desired we needed and uh, I hope you like this one. Other thing I wanted to mention out was that we could, instead of doing, other, there was a lot of other operations you could do with uh, input up and relations, but we don't need any of those right now. 
uh, when the need arises, like for instance, you could change the fixed precision of decimal points. You could add more precision you want. By default, it's six decimal spaces. And then now what I wanted to introduce was something called color. So how I want to make change my dull black window into something colorful. So for that, I use the system command. So it's the system. And basically, you don't need any IO stream for this. So I'll just delete this. And then you put this parentheses and then double quotes and use the uh, keyword color and then the percentage. So if I run this, so once I execute this thing, you're going to see an ins oh, something over here, which is a semicolon missing. Now execute, compile and run. And once you compile and run, you're going to see some instructions print now. So you want to change your background. And basically, this is color and then attribute. So the thing is that the first digit, you, uh, you could select any of these colors. So the first thing is that the first number or the, the first digit, whatever it is, is going to be the background. And the second will be the foreground. Each digit can be any of the following values. So I want to change it to light aqua. I could say capital B and then I want to change the background to something like gray. So I say capital B and eight. So if I do something like capital B and then eight, you're going to see background changing to aqua and and you're going to see something awesome. So basically we change the terminal screen and you can see the foreground changing to the other specified color. So we could change it up and use any other color we want. And it's really awesome if you get used to these kind of functions and it's really handy out. Uh, want to make some kind of game and look how nice that color font looks. Okay. Another thing I had for you guys was that I created this uh, small program that is basically nothing It's just uh, a bunch of loops nested with each other and there's some for loop outer and it's probably more than a billion or trillion times it's gonna run and there's basically gonna flash colors so first you're gonna see this capital blue aqua you know you see that I really like this color and then after that it's gonna print meaning it's gonna go on for so long and then after that inside this loop is gonna print this thing 10 times so it's going to change the color and it's going to flash and change this thing meaning the i number which is going to be 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 all the way to 9 and then after that it's going to go in this loop and in, uh, print out this clever coding prompt and then change the color once more to something else which is cn4 you could check on the documentation what those colors are and then increment the plus plus so this is going to run for it's going to run for three, four times because K is zero over here. And then after that, this loop will just keep on executing. So if I save this, compile and run this, you're going to see some craziness going on. So now that's, that's what you call some awesome code. Now you can see blue and then a red flash, blue and then red flash. And you could see my code running and my fans keep on moving. And you know, my, my, my PC is going to, get hot so I'm gonna turn this off it's gonna overheat and uh, uh, so that was it with this video we'll see you in the next one